Hey, how are you? My name is Jamie Fenn, and today I'm going to show you how to do the separated glitch effect in DaVinci Resolve. Now, with some of the effects I'm going to show you how to do today, you will need a free third-party application called Reactor. If you don't know what that is or don't have it installed, click on this link right here. I do a brief overview and show you how to install it. If you like videos like this and you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do so and turn on notifications and comment down below. All right, let's get started. So real quick before we get started, if I'm going over some of the effects and your computer cannot handle what we're doing, I did release a brand new glitch pack. The link will be in the description and it makes things a lot easier when you're trying to do this effect. Not only does this pack work well for this effect, they also make epic transitions. And I will show you how to use these later on in the tutorial. All right, so with that said, let's go to this first clip. Now what we wanna do is turn this into a fusion composition. So right click on it and select new fusion clip. Put the playhead over that clip and click on Fusion. So after you've installed Reactor, what we want to do is make sure you have the right plugins for these effects. So we want to come up to Workspace, scroll down to Scripts, select Reactor, and select Open Reactor. So once you've opened Reactor, you want to come up here to the search and type in Glitch, and make sure you have MT Glitch Tool selected. Once you select it, click Install, and then what you can do is exit out of Reactor. Okay, for this first shot, what we want to do is come to the very beginning, select our median one, and hold down shift and press spacebar and type in glitch. Then what we want to do is come down to where it says ground loop. As you can see, this whole area is affected. The whole frame is now having this effect on it, which is a cool effect if that's what you're going for, but I want to just go for the window. So next, I'm going to select the glitch node and then select the polygon node. That will automatically attach to it. And what I want to do is keyframe the effect in the window. So next, I'm going to scroll into where the window is and just mask out around the frame of the window like that. Next, what you want to do is now go forward a few frames and continue the masking process to the edge of the frame. So as she steps up to the frame, I want to have the effect turned off. So I'm going to come up here to the inspector, select level and turn that all the way down. Then I'm going to go backwards in time with my keyboard a few frames and turn it up all the way. That way, when it gets to the point of where I want it to fade out, it's faded out. Now, what's really cool about this effect, this ground loop effect, is you can change the amplitude and the frequency. So you can turn this up, make it really look jagged. And then as far as the frequency, you can turn it down and make it kind of look like a portal. So with the glitch node selected, if you want to keyframe the effect, you can select each of these diamonds and change the frequency around. So starting off with maybe a really high frequency and then coming forward a few frames and turning the frequency down to kind of create like a warping portal look effect. And then to the very end where she gets up to the window, you can have the frequency turned down. So adjusting the frequency also kind of makes it fade away and make it look a little bit more smooth. You can add as many glitch nodes as you want, one after another, but if you want the mask to affect them, you will have to connect the same polygon mask that you've created to that first node to the future nodes that you add. So let's move on to the next effect. This is kind of like the one before, but we're gonna take it one step further. So go ahead and right click on the clip that you want to do the fusion composition with. Select fusion clip. Let's go into fusion. Okay, so now what we're going to do is create some glitches just in the dark part of her backpack. So let's go ahead and select median one, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in glitch and come down to where it says fractal static. Let's add that into the node tree. Next, we want to add a merge node. And then what we want to do is also add a luma keyer. So hold down shift and press spacebar and type in luma keyer. Now hold down shift and click the luma keyer to detach it from those two. And let's go ahead and connect this to the merge node. Next, we want to connect the median to the luma keyer. Next, we want to select the glitch node. And starting at the beginning of this clip, I'm going to add a polygon node and select the polygon node. And now you want to just go around her backpack and mask out roughly where her pack is. So if you look closely, you can see some artifacts in there. I'm going to adjust the glitch effect now. So select the glitch node and let's mess with the contrast just for now. So you can really see what we're doing here. Next, we want to select the luma keyer and bring down the high pretty far. And it depends on your clip. And also bring up the low just so it kind of pops through a little bit more. 
Next, you want to select the polygon node and just go a few frames forward and just continue to make sure you're masking out around her backpack or whatever object you're trying to do. So I'm going to highlight all of them and just continue moving the mask where I want the effect to be. And it, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect just because we're just affecting the luminance. So in order to control the effect and turn it on and off, we can click on the polygon node and come over to the inspector and look at the level. So once you bring the level all the way down, that means the effect will be turned off. And so what you can do is just go a few more frames throughout the clip and not have to worry about your mask for that point. But then when you do stop and you want the effect to happen again, you want to adjust the mask around the object of whatever you're trying to do the glitch effect on and just continue to move the mask where you want it to happen. So when you want the effect to continue to happen again, you want to select a keyframe, move one frame forward and turn this back up. Then what's really cool to do with this glitch node is you can keyframe the X and Y scale. So if you want to just come in here, select these keyframes and then adjust how these look, you can just move them up and down and that will change the effect of how this will look. Also play with this contrast. You can kind of keyframe any of these and just mess with it and then continue to create your own glitch effects and your own style of however you want it to look. So now we have something that looks like that. Okay, so once you start stacking effects, I understand your computer may be pretty slow and it may take some time. So if you did get the glitch bundle down in the description, I'll show you how to use it right now. All right, so once you've downloaded the glitch pack, what you wanna do is just simply open the folder and drag in the effect that you want to use. Next, you wanna add a merge node and connect the glitch to the merge. Then what you wanna do is scroll to the point in your clip where you want the glitch to happen. For example, I want it to happen right about here. With the glitch node selected, select a polygon node and go ahead and cut out what you want to have the glitch effect on. Then what you wanna do is continue the mask for as long as you want the glitch effect to happen or until the video file of the glitch stops. Then once you've done that, you want to control the level of the effect with the polygon node. So I want the polygon node to basically turn off the effect at a specific point, which is right here. So in order to do that, I want to select the keyframe, turn it all the way down, go one frame before, turn it all the way back up. Then I'm gonna to come to the beginning of where I started to keyframe, watch where it loses the track essentially, keyframe it, go one track before, turn it off. So now you may be saying, well, where's the, uh, the glitch effect? Since the video file of the glitch effect is not the same length as the clip underneath it, we'll have to retime it. So what I wanna do is click the median two, which is our glitch effect. And right where I see where I started the keyframes, which is these little dots right here in our timeline, which is the 37th frame. I'm gonna come back to the median and turn this all the way up and turn this bottom one up to where it says 37. The trim automatically moves, so I'm just gonna turn that down because there's only 21 frames in this glitch effect. So now as you can see, the glitch effect is right where we masked it, but the most important thing next that I always make sure to do, at least just personally for me because this is the look I like, is I come down to the merge node, come over to the inspector and where it says apply mode, scroll down and select screen. That way the glitch somewhat has a transparent look to it. So if you wanna use my glitch pack as transitions, it's super easy to do. All you have to do is drag in one of the glitches, put it over where you want it to transition to. Now with that glitch video selected, come up here to the inspector, select the composite mode and scroll down until you see screen. And now you'll have a glitch transition. Super easy. If you download the glitch pack, I would greatly appreciate it. You guys rock and I will see you in my next video.